Right. Okay. I think we're good to kick off. So, um, welcome to today's webinar. We are going to be, well, Mafe is going to be showing you how to build your elections toolkit with Flourish. Um, but first of all, I'm just going to introduce myself. Um, so hello. Um, also, as I'm talking, please feel free to say hello in the chat and where you're from. But I am Annie. I am a social media specialist here at Flourish. I am from London and I am based in London. Um, and I absolutely love telling stories. But I will be here today to answer any questions that you have in the chat and also just make sure things run smoothly, which means that we are going to go through a little bit of housekeeping. So first of all, if you could please ask any questions through the chat, there might be a little time um, for questions at the end, but I will try and get back to you in the chat as soon as I can. Um, if you want more information about our webinars or any future webinars we have coming out, um, make sure to go to our webinar page for more information. Um, and also make sure to sign up to get email notifications where you can hear more about what is coming out with Flourish and what exciting things we have coming your way. And also one final thing, um, we will be sending a recording and the slides to you um, by the end of the week um, in the email that you registered to the webinar with. Um, but without further ado, I am going to hand over to Mathe, who will be your host for today. Thank you, Annie. Welcome, everybody, to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Mafe. I'm a database specialist here at Flourish. I love all things charts. And like Annie mentioned, I'm going to be your host for today's webinar, which is a very exciting topic. It's all about elections and specifically how you can build your own elections toolkit using Flourish. Now, without further ado, this is what we're going to be doing today. I'm afraid no predictions. I think I spotted somebody in the chat asking about this. No predictions, just charts. And we're going to be working with historical data. Um, so all data, we're not here to, to guess the future. Um, we're going to be covering polling charts. So that's still relevant in the lead up to the US election. We still have a couple of weeks to go. Um, so how to visualize polling data, how to show uncertainty, those are things that we're going to be covering today. Then we're going to be covering election results charts. These are very, very simple, sleek charts to visualize the results of the US election, but also any election on other countries. Then we're going to have a big section on mapping election results. That's a huge topic. We know that our customers and our users quite enjoy visualizing election data in a geographical manner. So I'm going to be covering things like the basics of, basics of maps, how to do your own regions. And then I'm going to be showing you uh, our brand new feature, the new custom grid layout in line for Pi and other templates. And last but not least, how to adapt all of these beautiful charts made for the web for your social media, as we know that this is a key topic in today's um, media landscape that you guys need to transfer your, um, your content into different channels. So we're going to be covering how to do this with Flourish and Canva. And there will be time of questions at the end. However, if you have any pressing issues um, throughout the webinar, feel free to drop us a note in the chat, not the Q&A feature, in the normal chat. So let's just get started. These are the, as I just mentioned, the charts we're going to be covering. Um, this is going to be like a very, very dynamic, um, fast-paced, hands-on session. So as Annie mentioned, these slides, the data, and the charts are going to be all shared with you, as well as the recording after the webinar. So please don't panic if I'm going too fast or if I'm covering a lot of things at once. You're going to have access to all these resources um, by the end of the week. But yeah, as I mentioned, we're going to be covering polling charts. So how to take the pulse of public opinion, um, election results, so topic-specific templates to use on your election night, and maps to explore the geographical dimension of the election. Before we begin, I'm going to leave this here on the screen for a minute. If you do not have a Flourish account, you can create one by going to Flourish Studio. Feel free to do so. Feel free to log in if you want to follow along. If you just want to watch, that's also perfectly fine. And if you do want to work with me as I build the chart, or if you just want to access the data for your own practice, or just to take a look um, into the, the, the charts that I'm going to be creating, you can access the data here. That should be a Google Sheet. Um, that will be loading on your screen. If you have any issues, please let us know in, in the chat. I'm just going to leave this for a um, couple of, I guess, seconds for people to, to access. That would be bit.ly forward slash US dash elections dash data. 
I think Annie can share this in the chat as well. So I'm just going to move because we have a lot to cover and we only have one hour. So the first thing that we're going to be creating is this polling chart. Oh, thank you, Oscar, for sharing that in the in the chat. That's super helpful. So the first thing we're going to be creating is this polling chart. And a couple of the elements that I want to highlight here are the use of color, the use of the shaded area to showcase the upper and lower threshold of um, a polling source. So you will have obviously multiple data points in whenever you receive polling data. And we're highlighting the average, but we're also highlighting the confidence interval with that shaded area. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. And I'm also going to be showing you how to add um, helpful annotations. Oops, sorry. Helpful annotations to make sure that you also add extra context to your, to your charts. So without further ado, I'm just going to go right on to Flourish. And in fact, I'm loading my data first so you can take a look into the materials we're going to be using today. So brief overview, every single one of these sheets works for each of the charts we're going to be working with today. So it should be very simple for you to use this data in the future, to reuse this data, and to practice the charts we're going to be covering. Um, we're going to start with polling chart. And just to give you a quick overview, we have a date, a column with our dates. Then we have a column for the average of the Trump um, polling data. Then we have an average for the Biden polling data. Then we have something called high Trump, high Biden, low Trump, and low Biden, and the same for um, Kamala Harris. And this is that higher threshold and that lower threshold that we're going to be using um, in just a second. So that's a quick overview. I'm just going to copy all of this data. And I'm hopping on to Flourish. If you're new to Flourish, welcome. This is what your projects page looks like. Whenever you create a new visualization, this is your, your first um, stop. I'm going to click New Visualization. And in this case, I'm going to be creating a line chart. Lovely. Again, if you're new to Flourish, um, every single one of our templates has preloaded data to help you understand how you need to format your data, what your chart should look like. And this is a very simple line chart um, consisting of an x-axis, a y-axis, and then my series which dif with different colors. I'm going to go into the data and I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see this a bit more clearly. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the data in this sheet and I'm going to paste all my data by doing Command V. I'm quickly going to turn this off. These are settings that automatically Flourish will have activated for you. This is absolutely um, personal preference. I prefer to simply turn them off. I find that they help me create my charts um, or explain other people how to create their charts a bit more easily than dealing with the preloaded data set. But again, looking into our data, we have a column with the dates that's correctly being understood as my labels and time. That's column A. And then I have all the columns for my series. So let's see what we can do here. The first thing that we're going to do is to make sure that this is actually showing um, chronologically order data. You can order your data at any point using these little arrows. And I'm going to start binding my values. So the first thing I'm going to do is binding everything from B to G. And I'm going to explain why not everything in just a minute. And the way we bind data into Flourish is by inputting the name of the header of the column, so the letter. And if I'm doing a range, I do a dash. But if I want to select specific columns, then I can do a comma. So for instance, if I only wanted the data that relates to Trump, I can select B, D, and F. And I'm going to do just that, B, D, F. OK. And then let's see what's happening here. And nothing is happening. And I'm just going to reload and see why. That's a bit odd. Well, that gives me a good moment to actually talk about something that Flourish is quite um, good at and it's a very powerful feature, which is our data typing. So our data typing means that whenever you input data into Flourish, you're able to tell it what sort of data it is. So at the very beginning, when I parse my data, when I log my data, and I told it to not interpret anything, it's leaving me to my own devices to do it. If you leave those boxes ticked, um, Flourish is going to do a great job at interpreting your data. But if I click here, it is basically interpreting my data incorrectly because I have a date, a month, and a day. Sorry, a year, a month, and a day. And here it's only understanding year. 
So that's a very easy fix. All I need to do is click on the drop down, go below, and I can simply select the format that adjusts to my data, which is this one. And for the input, I'm actually going to change it to make it just the day and the month. There we go. So that fixed it. Now we go from having no chart to having something resembling a chart. Now, what I mentioned before is that we're going to have three data points for each of the candidates in this particular chart. One is going to be the average of the candidate, in this case, Trump, and the higher threshold and the lower threshold. So let me just find all my data. And I'm going to do a range all the way to J. Let's see what happens. See, we're getting a little error here because some of the columns are being interpreted as text. And again, this is another great opportunity to talk about missing data. Sometimes your data, it's not going to be super clean. We know that for elections, that can be the case because you're going to have data that's going to be incoming or incomplete. So the best way to deal with this is to understand how your data is working and also how to troubleshoot it with Flourish. In this case, it's giving me an error because I have a text type column when I only I can only parse numbers in here. And it's doing that because obviously we know that Kamala Harris joined the presidential race later on. And I have a lot of empty values in these first two columns. So the way to troubleshoot that is simply by changing that from text to number and apply. And if I redo this and I go from B to J, there we go. That fixed it. I have a very ugly looking chart, but no worries. We're going to fix this in just one second. So what's happening here, as I've been mentioning, is that we are having three data points per candidate and we only actually need to show one. So this chart has a little bit of a hack because it's using a shade between the lines feature to showcase that transparency behind the average and give you a confidence interval. Now, the way to make that happen is to go into line dots and areas. I'm going to go and I'm going to toggle this on to shade between the lines. And I'm going to tell which lines I want to shade in between. If you click on this little um, question mark bubble, you're going to be able to see how to do what, what's the syntax to get this to work. And the syntax is the series where I want to shade the data. Oh, there we go. The series that I want to shade in between, followed by a double colon, double column for the color, if I want distinct colors for each of the series, and then the opacity feature. So very quickly, I'm going to do this with hi Biden. And this needs to be spelled exactly as it is on your data tab, so including capital letters and everything. So this is hi Biden, low Biden, with capital B. And let's see what that gets me. There we go. So now I have that hidden, or rather highlighted but I need it to be in the correct shade. Um, Flourish understands keywords, for instance, for some color. So if I say blue, it's going to do um, the job just fine. And I'm gonna do the same for Harris. Is that, there we go. Low Harris. And again, blue, and I'm gonna do high, Trump, low Trump, and in this case, I'm going to do red, and let's see what we have. And I misspelled this one, which is why it's not popping up. There we go. So now this is starting to make a little bit more sense, and I have my areas highlighted, I have all my information coming together, so let's adjust the colors a little bit to make sure that this is a understandable chart. In the data at the very, very end, I have the color codes supplied here that we're going to be using throughout the session to make sure that everything is on brand. If you had your own brand uploaded into Flourish, maybe these colors are already part of your palettes. So you can just select them from, from wherever um, it's most comfortable for you. In this case, I'm just gonna replace Democrat for Biden. And I'm gonna remove the other because I don't need that. And I'm gonna change this to Trump. Copy this again and type Harris. Okay, that's looking teeny tiny bit better. Now, this is what we call a color override. So here we're just telling Flourish directly what colors to apply to each of the elements of my chart, as opposed from getting all this information from the palette. 
an extremely powerful resource to make sure that your charts are looking um, exactly as you want them to. And now I have all of these messy lines that are not adding any information that are cluttering my chart. So how do I get rid of them? Well, as I mentioned, um, Flourish understands certain keywords like the word transparent. If I do that and I'm targeting high Biden, let's see what happens. That disappears. So if I do this with all of those lines that I don't want to see, and I'm going to do it for all the candidates very quickly. Time to Low Trump, High Harris, and Low Harris. There we go. So that's already looking way closer to the chart that we are trying to recreate. A couple of things that I can do here is I'm going to get rid of the outline of the lines. There we go. I'm going to decrease the opacity of those areas to 0 0.1. So they're a bit more muted. Maybe that's too much at 0 0.15. That makes a little bit more sense. I can notice here that I skipped one. So high Trump may have an error. Let me just check that. Uh, high Trump, I skipped the colon. There we go. And the last thing I'm going to do to make this even more legible is get rid of this little connectors right here. So I go to labels and I'm going to remove the connectors from auto to off. There we go. So that's already looking like a much, much clean looking chart. Amazing. Now, other things that I can do very quickly, I'm just going to get rid of the outline so my text gets a little bit closer to my chart. There we go. And one thing that I'm noticing here is that these axes or this bottom area of the chart is very, very empty. And that's because there's no data going from zero to around 30%. So if I don't need this area to represent anything meaningful in my chart, I can get rid of that by adjusting the Y axis. This is something somewhat controversial because a lot of people are going to say that a non-zero axis can be confusing, it can be misleading. However, this is a prime example of, or situ of a situation where that might actually be the best thing you can do. So in this case, I'm even going to decrease it even further and start at 35. More things that I can do to improve this chart. 35 what? 35% because we're talking about polling averages. So to fix that, I go to number formatting and I add a percent into my suffixes. And that's already more obvious and clearer. Other things that I can do, I can change my axis a little bit to look more clean. I can do that in the styling section, add that to zero. And I feel like that looks a bit sleeker. In Flourish, you can add, of course, titles and subtitles. I'm just going to say um, polling data for the 2024 US presidential race. There we go. And I can style that as much as I want. I'm going to center that. I'm going to add a footer. This data, it's coming from 538. This is all going to be highlighted in the resources when we share them. And you can explore those in your own time. But in this case, it's going to be 538. There we go. And there you have it. If I had a logo here, I could enable it or I could disable it. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it as is. This all comes with your branding. And this is almost ready to go. The last or the missing piece of the puzzle here would be the annotation. Because we, of course, know the story. We know what happened. But here we have like a big gap in between series. And we need to explain to our readers what happened here. So I'm just going to go to annotations, activating them on the x-axis. And again, this is telling me what's the syntax. I need to say, I need to give it my label and then I need to give it the point in the X axis where that annotation should exist. In this case is Biden drops out. And if memory serves, I think this should have been on July 21st. And notice how this has to match the data or the format, sorry, of my data right here. There we go. That was correct. I'm going to just do a couple of adjustments, my dash width, and I'm going to move this below because I feel like it's more readable 
do this. And there we go. Biden drops out. There we have it. A complete polling chart with confidence interval done between or done with the shade between the lines feature, an annotation, custom format for my dates, and suffixes on my x-axis. Last thing I can do, I can add a title to this chart. I'm going to call it polling chart. And then I can decide how I want to share this with the world. I go to export. And in this case, I can either make this public so that anybody who access this chart can duplicate the project and the data. Or if I untick that, then people are going to be able to see it, but they're not going to be able to duplicate it. In this case, I'm just going to publish it with everything. And for those of you publishing online on your website, here's where you would have your embed code. So your script embed, which we recommend as it is responsive and it adapts to smaller screen sizes, or your iframe, which is a bit more finicky, but it can still work for your purposes. And again, just to show you how this works in the real world, this is what the showcase page would look like. People can access this chart. And here they would have a blue button to duplicate and edit the chart that you've created in case you're interested in sharing this with um, with other people, with um, sources, etc. Okay, we breeze through that one. More to come. These are the three keys from this chart that make it unique. That's why we're um, showcasing it today. Showcasing uncertainty again with the shade between the lines setting, using custom colors and using keywords like transparent or those key colors to um, adjust the way the look and feel of the chart. And last but not least, adding annotations to make sure that you give extra context and enrich your chart. You're gonna get help docs to all of these in the slides, but I believe Annie is also sharing them on the chat very helpfully. Moving on to another way of showing polling data, it's with our very famous um, racing line chart. So here, more than providing that very detailed daily update on each of the data points with the high and the lower threshold, here we're more interested in the story behind who overtook who, what was the evolution of the data through the race. And of course, this is extremely engaging. This is a chart that is very popular for, for instance, in social media. So um, can you mark the day of the debates? You could absolutely do that um, just by supplying the specific date and then adding them to the highlight. Um, that's how you would go about it. But you can annotate anything on your chart. Uh, sorry, just answering a question there in the chat. Back into this chart, we're going to learn how to recreate this in just one second. And it's exactly the same data set that we use for the first chart. So animating polling chart, we would have a couple of options here. Let me go back to my projects page and I'm going to start a new project. And in this case, if I type the word race here, it's going to give me all the options that have a racing element to it, like our sports race or bar chart race. But I'm going to go for the line chart race. Amazing. Now, if we look into the data tab, this just does look a little bit different from what our line chart was suggesting in that instead of having a whole column for my days, I actually have them as separate columns, right? So again, Flourish is telling you through these little elements how you should interpret your, um, sorry, not interpret your data, how you should wrangle your data for each of the different templates. So this is what we call a long format data set or a wide format data set, apologies, because it is wider than it is longer. It has a new column for each of the series as opposed to a new row for each of the series. We can see that a bit more clearly here. This is the exact same data that we use for the polling chart, except that we remove the higher and the lower threshold for each of the candidates. So using things like the pivot or unpivot function in Google Sheets, you're able to wrangle your data. But just to show you very quickly, if I go into Flourish, I clean my sheet and I add this. Obviously, this is not in a um, format that is usable for Flourish. But thankfully, I do have this little feature right here that allows me to swap rows and columns, meaning that it allows me to pivot my data within Flourish. Now, this is extremely helpful when you're trying to very, very quickly um, arrange a data set that is not optimal for a Flourish template. So what happens if we actually add this to the data, to the data bindings? I'm going from B, and I believe the end is something like HGT. There we go. 
dt. There we go. Oop, sorry. It's b through gt. There we go. There we have it. So a couple of issues with this approach. If you have zero on your data set, that's going to appear, which is why on this sheet, you're going to be able to select the first option that contains all your data with blank rows for your empty records. Very quickly, I'm just going to replace that. Paste that. There we go. And that's much better. We can see that Harry's um, is no longer showing up here because there's no data for her at this stage in the in the race. Okay, couple of things I can do here once again. I am going to change the x-axis and I'm going to give it a minimum of 30 once again to just zoom in and actually show those elements within the race that are a bit more interesting for me. More things that I can do. I'm going to change the animation speed because this is set to last quite a while. If I set it to a lower number, it's going to go faster. If I set it to a higher number, it's going to go slower. So in this case, 100, it's quite a fast pace. It's giving me like a good rhythm and I can see hopefully any time now, the moment where um, Biden interrupts his campaign and Harris overturns. There we go. So we can see that very clearly there. That's great. Other things that I can do in terms of styles, I can change the start and the end radius. I can give it an end radius of zero, meaning that it's only going to start as a line. It's not going to have that little dot. And I'm going to make the end radius just a bit bigger, 1.3. Seems okay. And there we go, line styles. I'm going to make this a bit thinner. These are all the things that you can do to stylize your chart however much you want. Um, and it's all down to personal preference. Now, back into my data, I'm very quickly going to grab these color codes again. Go to colors. And I'm going to say Biden. And here I'm going to say and here is, oop, there we go. Nice. So now we have that all correctly done. Very quickly, I'm going to change the um, source because that's incorrect. And it's again 538. But, okay, that's all looking great. Um, if I replay it, we're going to see that that animation is happening quite nicely, but I'm missing a key element, and that is the photographs for the candidates right here. That's going to give it that extra level of finesse. Um, so if I go to my data and I add one column to the left, I'm going to call that column image. And I'm going to bind that column to image, even though now it's empty. And nothing's going to happen. Well, actually, nothing happened because it's empty. Um, so, you know, nothing's showing on my chart here. Nothing has changed. There are two ways in which you can um, add images to Flourish. You can either click on an empty cell, hit Upload File, and this is going to explore your personal folder, whatever is on your computer, and you're able to select this from um, your own um, files. However, if we don't have a file, we are still able to add an image by supplying a URL. Now, I'm here at Wikimedia Commons, and I'm going to look for an image of Biden. I think this is a good enough image. And I say copy image address, not save image and not copy image. Copy image address. I copy that. I go back into Flourish, and I paste that, which is a URL. And if I see my preview, I can see that image already loaded perfectly. So this is a really good system when you don't want to have a bunch of files on your computer, maybe you're working on the go, and you have a trusted source where you can get your um, images from. I'm using Wikimedia because of their um, usage rights, and I know that those abide and comply with what we're trying to do here, so it's the safest, the safest possible route for me. I'm going to do the same for all the candidates. I'm going to add this one here, copy image address right there. And the last one is going to be Kamala Harris. There we go. This one, copy image address. I paste that. And there we have it. Last thing I can do 
The last thing that I can do right here is to remove these controls if I don't need them. Ranks is just going to give me, you know, who's position first, who's position second. But in this data set, it's just not um, optimal. So in that case, I'm going to go to controls and rank scores toggle. I'm just going to set to hidden so I don't see them. Other things that I can do here is even change things like the color of the button. I'm going to make it black. And if I hover over, I have this color hover over. I can change it as well. And if I click replay, if I do that in black, I think. There we go. Well, oh, sorry. That's because I didn't change the color of the background. There we go. I was selecting the wrong elements. If I do that, there we go. Again, just little stylistic tweaks that you can do to your charts that are going to elevate the look and feel of, of your visualization. I'm going to give this another racing polling chart, another title, and I'm going to go back into my slides. And again, three keys that we did with this particular chart type is um, on pivoting data in Flourish, which is a very um, easy, quick fix whenever you're in a pinch and you need to quickly wrangle your data. Then it's uploading images with a URL, very useful feature, and to adjust the speed of the animation with an animated chart. Lovely. Now, we're done with polling. We're done with the previous stages of the elections. Now, what happens when we actually need to showcase the results on election night or beyond? We have multiple chart types. I'm just going to highlight two that are very simple, but at the same time, sometimes they go under the radar. People don't know that we offer this. And I think that these are great ways um, to visualize data. So this first one is going to be a very simple waffle chart with our pictogram template. And the reason why I like this is because sometimes when we're showing percentages and when we're only trying to show, you know, big numbers, not a lot of nuance, we go for, you know, the guilty suspects. We go for a pie chart, we go for a stacked bar chart, but this has a little bit of more, um, not complexity necessarily, but it's different from what you would generally see. And obviously this is something that might give you a bit of a competitive edge if you're using different charts from um, other outlets or simply if you want to explore new chart types. So this is very simple to create. Again, I'm gonna go back into my projects page, new visualization, and here I'm typing pictogram. And I'm going to select the waffle chart starting point. And we can see that this is extremely simple data right here. It's not the question, but it's just going to be a parameter, a category, and then the number of elements that belong to that category. If I go to my data set and I see this as results as percent, and I go back here, there we go. So we have three parties, Democrat, Republican, and other. And then we have the percentage of the votes. And we can see how that already happened right here in the template. Now, once again, to get the colors as I want them to look like, I just go to my color codes, copy all of this back in here. And there we have it. Extremely simple. Like It really does not get any easier than this. Once again, things that I could do, I could, you know, move the legend to be in the middle if that's something that goes better with my style guide. I can increase the size. Maybe I need this to be like 1.5 or something like that. I can add a title. So again, on my header elements, um, 2020 U.S. Presidential Race Results. I can add a subtitle. Again, if I go into the further stylings, I can make this a bit bigger. So there's a little, little bit of contrast between the elements like that. And boom, we just created a very simple, very quick um, results chart for results night. And this can work for um, a number of elections. They don't have to just be presidential. They just, they just don't have to be the US. They can be anything um, that you want. Again, I'm gonna call this waffle chart results. And um, moving. To the next example. So this is one of our um so this is one of our election specific templates. We have a couple like the parliament chart, which is it can be a half circle, or even almost like a full circle, where you add the number of seats. Potentially you've seen this. We covered it on an earlier webinar this year 
um, that we that we did. We're trying to not repeat the same content. That's why I'm not covering the same that we that we covered on back in May. But you have access to those recordings if you want to to see that. Um, this in particular, it's a really good resource when you're trying to show coalitions. That is not the case of the U.S. system because you only have two parties plus the independents. But if you're looking at European elections and you're trying to see which candidate or which coalition and collection of can uh, of parties can give a majority, then this can be a really interesting way of doing that. Because by clicking here on the legend, I can see, you know, how long it takes me to reach a majority. Another great thing that this template offers is a drop down. So in this case, not only do I have the US total, I also have the total per state. So I can go and I can give people like this tool and this resource so they can see their local um, election results. So Again, maybe you're thinking about presidential elections, but maybe you're thinking about um, other types of elections, like I don't know, school districts or um, local authorities, whatever system um, you have in the place that you live. Now, to create this, it's extremely simple. It's going to be this data set, and I'm just gonna go very quickly again here. New visualization. And in this case, I'm going to type the word elections on my little search bar. And it's the elections result chart. Um, well, we do have an example that already has the data. I believe it has the data that I'm going to supply. No, lovely. It only has the data by number of seats in in the um, House of Representatives. But again, you can see how uh, can even even have ready to go charts from from Flourish itself. In this case, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna copy all of this data. I'm gonna clear it here. Amazing. Uh, my region name is going to be A, and my results by party are going to be B through D. And in this case, I didn't even have to change the colors. I am, though, um, because they're a bit different from what I thought. Come and see. I go very quickly here into colors. And notice how this is not changing because here my labels are actually Democratic Party and Republican Party as opposed to Democrat and Republican. So to do that, I just need to change that here. Republican Party. There we go. And other, other parties. And by binding multiple rows in here instead of just one, it automatically generates this dropdown for me where I can see all my results per state. So once again, extremely, extremely simple, easy, and effective way to showcase election results. I'm going to save this again. Okay, I'm going to go back into my projects page. And that is going to take us to the other end of the session, which is how to map elections. Now, mapping, of course, is a topic in and of itself. I'm not going to go too deep into how our templates work. We do have um, videos, resources, and a previous webinar on the topic. I'm very quickly going to show you how you can use the templates and the sample data that I provided to visualize um, results. So we are going to be looking into, and there should be a lovely mapping here. You must believe it. We are going to be working towards that, so no worries. We're going to be working on how to visualize winning party in two different ways with a categorical scale, but also a numeric scale. I'm going to show you how to create state level results. And then I'm just going to introduce you to the hex map and our cartogram, which is a US specific template that we have um, currently in display for everybody, every Flourish user that you can use to visualize your, your election results. And this is where we're going to be creating um, very, very, very quickly. So going back here, new visualization, and I'm going to be dealing with the projection map. We have different map templates. They have their time and place. They have a different functionality. For this particular exercise, projection map is the best. Um, long story short, projection map deals with different world projections, and one of them is very specific to the US. It's the one that allow us, if I go back here, it's the one that allow us to map Can um, not Canada, Alaska and Hawaii right here when we very well know that that's not how the earth actually is um, composed. So using that specific um, projection, it's the reason why I'm choosing the projection map over other templates. Um, we have a lot of like starting points. In this case, I'm just gonna go to US counties. 
There we go. And before I even jump into the data, very, very, very quick introduction to Flourish Maps if you've never seen them before. Differently from all the other templates we've been working with, this has multiple sheets within the data tab. So we have a regions, which is giving all the information that's coloring each of these regions. We have the region geometry, which is actually giving all the information for how to even draw the shapes that create our map. So all these little shapes are being parsed through this data sheet. Then we have points if you have geographical um, information supplied as latitude and longitude coordinates. And we have lines if you wanted to show something like rivers, borders, highways, you name it. In this particular case, I'm going to get rid of these because I don't need it. And I can see how they um, disappear from my data sheet. I'm going to be working exclusively with the region staff. And what I'm going to do is go to county level 2020 results. And this is all the data that I need. I have a lot of information here. I have the year of the election, the state, the abbreviation of the state, the composite name, which is the combination of the state and the county name. Um, quite handy because a lot of um, US counties are repeated. The solo county name, the FIPS, which is an, uh, a unique uh, code for each of the counties. And then who won the election and other numerical data like and the percent of total of the votes, things like the margin of victory. So without further ado, I'm just gonna copy this, this over into Flourish and we're going to see what we're working with. I'm gonna clear the sheet. I'm gonna paste my data. And a couple of things I need to do here. So the most important step in order for me to actually get a map, because at the moment I don't have anything on display, is to find a column that's going to correctly tell Flourish where, like, what's the information that I'm trying to parse and how I want to color it. So I need a connection between the region's geometry tab and the region's tab, and that's generally going to be a unique ID. So something that's able to tell me that this county, it's somewhere in here, right? In this particular case, that's going to be the county FIPS. That's why we have that column there. It's important information in order for us to be able to map all the counties correctly. And we can see how that's already working because I have a fully working map of the states and I can see how this is all correctly rendered. The name, it's going to be the name of each of the counties um, or rather than the counties, each of the regions that you want to highlight here and they're going to pop up like this. So right now I'm seeing only the name of the state and I presume that's because it has only the name of the state. In my case, I probably want my label to be um, D, the name to be D. And the label, the label is actually going to be whatever pops up if we ever click the, in the regions layer, if we activate our labels, if we show the labels right now, they're set to be shown and there's nothing in here. If we give it the column D, there we go. That's a lot, but this is basically that column that you're parsing. If you don't give it a column, it simply won't show any labels. And because this is a lot of granular data, I'm just not going to give it any. Now, the group, it's quite handy because basically, I'm going to go back into my data here. It gives you a bigger geographical separator. So in this case, if we removed the groups layer, we don't know where each of the states begin and we would have all the counties to the same level of hierarchy. So this is just a little thing to help you and your readers understand where are they positioned on the map. Um, this can work if you have multiple levels of divisions, if you are working with like smaller or bigger geographical units. And last but not least, actually, this is the most important bit. I'm going to give it a color by column. In this case, I'm gonna give it the column for the winner which in this case is going to be the party, that's column S. And I'm also going to give it the color percentage by number of votes, um, which is the margin of victory. Um, we have a negative number and a positive number. Negative, um, traditionally, the positive number is for the winning party. In this case, the positive numbers are for the Democratic Party and the negative numbers are for the Republican Party. And the closer the number to 100 means the um, uncontested that county was. So we're going to look at that in just one second. But for now, here we have already an interesting looking map, but it's getting there. At this point, you should know that I'm going to go back into my color codes. I'm going to copy all of this. 
very quickly, I'm going to go to my regions layer. And here, there we go. So I already supplied it with the right colors for the party. And I have pretty much a working map with all the results. Now, this is what we call a categorical map, because in this case, my regions are being colored by a category. In this case, the winning party. Other types of maps are what we call a choropleth map or a numerically colored map, where we provide a value, a numerical value, and we map all the values within our data set, within that, that spectrum, to different colors. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here. So this first map, very easily, very directly, shows you who won where but it's lacking a little bit of nuance by how much, how closely contested was that um, particular county. We're going to be able to achieve that by using this metric right here. And the way to do that is dealing with the continuous colors here. Now I'm switching to diverging because in this case, my data does have a natural zero. I have a positive number and a negative number. So I know that the closer they are to zero, the closer the election was on that particular um, state. My minimum color, I know it's dealing with Republicans, so I know it has to be red. And my maximum color, because it's closer to Democrats, has to be some shade of blue. There we go. And I'm just going to make my midpoint maybe something closer to a purple, maybe something like this. Again, this is all preference and maybe even down to your um, newsroom requirements. This is already looking a little bit more nuanced. We're able to see that there are areas where the blue is darker, or the red is darker, and that's to show um, where each of the candidates won a bit more. I can make this even a bit darker just for contrast. And I can change the way this data is being interpreted. In this case, very quickly, I'm going to make it a quantile and I'm going to give it 10 bits. I'm not going to get too much into this, but these are just statistical ways that you have to map your data a bit more effectively to show the new ones um, that your data set might, might have. So this might be a bit of a more accurate representation of the results because we're accounting for how uh, all the values were distributed unevenly across from, from the data set and a lot, of, a lot of nuances that we don't have time to cover today, but maybe that's something you're interested in. You can let us know in the survey that you're going to get after the webinar and we might do a whole webinar about how to deal with these little nuances with data maps and anything and everything that, that you want. Okay, I'm quite pleased with this. Other things that I can do, once again, stylistically, I'm just going to make this to the center. My controls are going to also go to the center. Controls, in this case, are these filters. I can swap that from a drop-down to a button, and I can move between winner and color percent by votes. I'm going to add a quick title, which is 2020 US Presidential Results. There we go. And again, I go to header, make that a bit bigger, maybe something like that. Now, the last piece of this puzzle, it's actually going to be dealing with the pop-ups. And I'm going to do this very quickly because I know that I'm almost at time, quite a classic. Um, so to make sure that your pop-ups are helpful, you're able to add specific information through the info for pop-ups um, element right here. So in this case, the things that I may want to highlight are the name of my county and the state. So I'm going to do D, the candidate, and maybe the percent of total. L. There we go. So this is not super helpful, but if I go to pop-ups and panel, I set them to be custom, then I'm able to do a couple of things here. If I do that, uh, this is for points, sorry, not for regions. I'm going to set that to none and panels for, there we go, for regions, pop-up, custom. Then now I have all the custom elements here. What I can do is select the elements that I want to appear on the pop-up. And they have this weird syntax where you need to do double curly brackets. So that's something to keep in mind. But here I have now as my header, the name of the county. If I go back and I go to the body of the pop-up, I can go here and say, winner and I'm going to get, there we go, party, but I actually want candidate. Candidate proper, there we go. I can say something like one with, I can say percent of total. 
C, add a percentage point of the votes. There we go. And now I can go on each of these and I get that dynamic pop-up that says the name of the candidate and that little thread that I just added to it. So X person won by X percentage of the votes. And I can even use this dropdown or this search box to look for specific counties. So um, for instance, if I wanted to do that Riverside, California, I can search for that there and it's gonna pop it here. Very, very handy. Now, we constantly hear a lot of people asking for um, regional um, maps for elections. So they want to maybe showcase a single state or they want to showcase geographical units that are way smaller than a country. That's very simple to do. I'm just gonna name this very quickly, US 2020 results. I'm gonna duplicate this and we're gonna work on that version. And that's gonna be state results. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna go to my 2020 county level. I'm going to filter by a specific state. In this case, let's do, let's do Arizona, why not? I'm gonna grab all of this. I'm gonna go back into my map. I'm gonna replace all this data. And I'm gonna give it the right binding. So I already know that my FIPS is gonna be column F, that the name is gonna be column D, no label, and I'm gonna color by the same thing, which was candidate proper and color by votes. So it's gonna be, uh, actually not party, it's, I lost, oh, there we go, S and R. And my info for pop-ups is going to be, again, D. The winner is going to be the candidate proper, which is I, and the percent of votes, which is L. There we go. Now, I breezed through that one. I am so sorry, but I, we're running out of time, so I just wanted to really show this to you because uh, we hear this a lot. We get a lot of requests for this. So all I did differently was to supply data for only a specific state. That's all I did, very simple. And the last piece of the puzzle to make sure that this actually looks correct is to go from the Alvarez USA projection, which is that special projection that shows Alaska and Hawaii um, in, in that specific way. I'm gonna select something like Eckerd 4, which is a very traditional um, projection. And I'm gonna switch from world to auto and whoop, that blew up a little bit, but that's gonna give me um, pretty much that view of this particular state exactly as I need it to be. And I can even see here all the nuances, again, coloring by the um, margin of victory as opposed to the winner below. There we go. There we have it. So those are the keys for mapping US elections. There is this wonderful result uh, resource that um, I'm going to be showing again very, very quickly. It's the census reporter. Um, this was mentioned to me by a fellow journalist, and she mentioned that this was a really good resource for people to look um, for not only census data, but also to look for those geographical areas whenever you do want to give Flourish the costume area for a specific um, map. I don't think I have a lot of time to go over this, but very, very, very quickly, if I go here and I search for, let's do Arizona again, for a specific state, and I go and perhaps go and say, show data, view table. Again, I'm breezing through this, but you're gonna have all the resources in your inbox by the end of the week. And I have this little section right here that says divide Arizona into, and this is gonna give me a lot of different um, subdivisions beyond county, which is, the only thing that we have at the moment in Flourish. I can have census tracts, block groups, places, native areas, whatever it is, congressional districts might be a good one. And I'm able to download this data. Now, the beauty here is that I can download this as a GeoJSON. And a GeoJSON is the file type that I would need. I'm just gonna add them here to the my desktop. That is the type of file that you need enable, and to be able to supply that to, to Flourish. Now, 
I wish I had the time to go over this in detail. Unfortunately, I don't. Again, we do have a webinar where we have explained this at length. So you're able to, to see how you're able to add your own bespoke regions and custom regions um, to your own map. I'm just going to have to skip that one, unfortunately, because um, we are almost at time. I want to give you a quick overview of this, which is our latest um, launch here at Flourish. We launched custom creative charts for some of our templates, like Sankey template, line bar, uh, line bar pie template, um, slope, and many more. And I added it to the map section because what this particular feature allows you to do is to show the small multiples, the smaller charts in any layout that you want. And in particular, in this case, we have a specific layout that maps out to the US. So you can see this working in, in this case, we're looking at the percentage of the votes that went to a specific party over time to see the evolution of voting, um, of voting patterns um, for each of the states. But you can visualize other things like population growth or unemployment rate and um, showcasing all, all of this data in a more um, bespoke way. So the way to do that, again, new visualization. And if I go into line bar pi, for example, we have them as starting points. So in this particular case, we have a custom grid here that is showing, I'm not sure exactly what's the data behind this, but it might be some sort of rate. And all the magic that's happening here, if I go to grid of charts, is here on the fixed setting and at custom positions. And these custom positions are being mapped out in a way that amounts to the map of the US. If I switch this back to auto, it's just gonna go into like the normal ordering of my series. It's gonna be alphabetical, no geographical um, pattern. But if I go to fixed and I use the starting point, this is a simple coordinate system that supplies a row and a column. So Alaska, it's one one because it's sitting on the first row in the first column. If I were to move Alaska to the right, I would be, for instance, one five. It would move here. So again, you are able to play around with these values and create your own bespoke um, grid of charts. They can be regional, they can have a different look, they can be anything that you want them to, to be. Now, I know that I ov I'm overrunning already, but this is pretty much the core, the essence of the webinar. I can either stop here or keep going for five more minutes and give you a very, very, very quick overview of how you can transform your charts for socials. Maybe if I can get some live feedback on the chat as to whether people want to stick around for longer, that would be amazing. Thank you, Naomi, appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks guys. Uh, sorry, you can see how this was a jam-packed session and we really had a lot to, to get on with. So, lovely. By popular demand, how you can transform your charts for socials. It's extremely important in today's age where social media is a key channel to reach your audiences. And why should your charts just be gated to the web, right? So here's where the magic of Flourish and Canva come together. These are all examples of charts that we posted on our own social media channels and how we've um, improve them by leveraging some things that are possible with Canva, but might not be possible within Flourish. So for instance, adding this big emoji for a dollar bill to showcase the US stocks, not possible within Flourish, perfectly possible within Canva. Adding a big Taylor Swift to talk about the Eras tour and like the value that she's made with each of the tours that she's done, not possible within Flourish, well done within Canva. And even more nuanced things like specific types of annotations or highlights like this very subtle outline that we did in this um, heat map to show some birthdays. So this is the back of the presentation that you're seeing now live. This is generally how we're working with things um, here at Flourish. And here's my blank canvas. So let's pretend this is going to be a social media post. Well, the first thing that I need to do is I need to bring my Flourish chart into Canva so I'm able to then tinker a little bit with it and add the key elements to make this pop on social. If you've never done this before, um, and if you didn't know about this, there is a Flourish app within Canva. All I need to do is to go to the apps in the Canva dropdown, type Flourish, and it's gonna pop up here with our logo. And then this is gonna load 
all of your um, charts, all the charts that you've been working on. If you are new to Flourish and you don't have anything yet on the Flourish side, then this is going to be empty. So you need to create your Flourish charts first, first before you drop it here on Canva. Now, in this example, I'm actually going to be working with a chart you've already seen, which is this custom grid of charts um, showing the percentage of votes per candidate per election since the 1880s until 2020. So a couple of things you might notice here is that this chart doesn't have a title. Um, this is not a line as I want it to be. I only have the chart. I'm going to very quickly open this and hit edit. And if I do that, that's going to automatically lead me to flourish. And I'm going to be able to do a couple of things like centering this to the middle. And why not let me even turn this from a square swatch into a rounded swatch. If I go back to Canva, I can see the change already immediately adapted. So that is also a great benefit is that the connection between Canva and Flourish is quite fast. So you're able to tweak your charts as you're adding elements to that to, to them on, on Canva, pretty much live. So the reason why you may want to bring your Flourish charts into Canva and to do certain adaptations for socials is because what works for the web might not be optimal for social media. And you don't have interactivity on social media. So for instance, highlighting or hover over a specific um, facet here to show the data, it's not possible on Instagram, for example. So you may want to add an annotation. You may want to add something extra um, here within Canva and then export that. So a couple of things I can do. I can adapt this to my screen. So I'm just going to make it a bit taller. And I already have this pretty much prepared over here. So a little bit of behind the scenes magic, but I have my title and I can maybe adjust this a bit better, maybe make this a bit bigger, again, centered since 1990. And again, I'm just showing you the things that you could do. You could adjust your title um, to be a different font, maybe a font that is not available on Flourish, maybe a layout that is not possible yet within Flourish. These are the sort of things you're able to do here with Canva. I'm going to add a source right here. There we go. I can add my logo right here. There we have it, something like that. Maybe that's a bit too wide. Again, you can just tinker with it as much as you want to suit your style, your newsroom guidelines, however you want it to look. And then I can do even more um, interesting things. Like for instance, if I add this little curved arrow, maybe I'm able to say, oh, I want to highlight something here on the Washington facet, right? And maybe something interesting. There we go. And I can add little annotations and I can make them maybe a bit smaller. Maybe you want to do something similar on a different area of your chart, perhaps over here. Just rotate that, make that a bit smaller and add something else over here. You can go even crazier with it. You can add icons, you can add maybe more shapes. You can just do further styling to your charts in ways that you might not be able to, to do with Flourish or that might not be optimal for web publishing, but are optimal for different channels. And if I were on a single Canva asset, if I were viewing this in a Instagram square post um, template, for instance, I can then export this as a PNG and upload that into my social media without um, pretty much any issues. Um, I'm going to answer this one very quickly. If you have a Flourish account, do you automatically have a Canva account or do you need to create one? Great question. You do not. You have to create um, a Canva account or vice versa. If you're a Canva user and not a Flourish user, to be able to do all of this, you need to create a, a separate account. And it's a separate login, it's a separate um, password. So do be, be mindful be mindful about that. Um, but once they... Once they connect, they connect pretty pretty easily. And then you have all your charts available over here and you're able to do exactly what I just did um, right here. Um, and this is also a sneak peek because we might or might not be publishing a very similar chart sometime this week on our social. So um, stay tuned for that. 
but that's that's me. I'm gonna um pass over to Annie now. Hello, thank you so much, Mathe. That was amazing. Um, very jam packed session. Um, so I've just got a last few bits to run through. A um, couple of updates. We have a new calendar template. So not only do we have this new grid of charts um, customization, we also have a new calendar template. Um, so you can now really easily create calendar style visualizations. You can add icons, you can add pop-ups. Um, so yeah, make sure you check that out. And also really excitingly, you can now add images to scatter plots. This was a big one for me. Um, so make sure you check that out and have some fun with it. Um, yeah, there's not going to be a lot of time now for questions. So if you do have any that I haven't managed to get to in the chat, please, please reach out to us. Um, you can email us at flourish-webinar at canva.com for webinar specific questions or for anything else, please reach out to us at hello at flourish.studio and we will be so happy to help. Um, you can also give us a follow on social media. We are on Twitter, Instagram and LinkedIn and all of our um, handles are there at the bottom and we will try and respond to you on there as well. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to us on those emails. We will be sending the recording and the slides to you by the end of the week um, to the email address that you registered for the webinar um, with. And thank you so much for sticking around until the very end. Um, and hopefully we will see you next time. Thank you guys. Thank you.